When I first started getting into training in the early 2000s, like mid 2005, 2006, there was a very famous book, and it's called Diagnosis and Treatment of Movement Impairment Syndromes by Shirley Sarman. And it was really a well read book. Uh, Everyone was reading it in the training, like if you read articles on T Nation, Testosterone Nation, all the blogs of the better known trainers at the time, everyone was talking about this book because trainers were starting to get, and strength and conditioning in general, were trying to get out of just lifting heavy weights, but also moving into not the physical therapy realm, but realizing that weightlifting done properly is kind of physical therapy. And if you knew better, if your anatomy knowledge was better, you could help more people. I had the book, studied it, and the one thing that was, it, there was just a million possible syndromes for one body, and I couldn't really understand that. It just, I didn't understand, it didn't make sense to me, but I couldn't make sense of why it didn't make sense to me. Nonetheless, I learned all the important muscles, and I learned how to target those muscles and use them, but of course, very little worked, and now I understand why that is. The problem is this, and well, actually, let me, so I'm going to talk about the shoulder, particularly the right shoulder, so really the right scapula. So I'm saying shoulder, I really mean more the right scapula, because the shoulder is, the shoulder, the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder, is the arm bone going into the scapula, okay? So that is the shoulder joint. So it's the intersection of your upper arm and the scapula, which is back here, but comes over to the front, and here's the top of the scapula on the right side, okay? Now, there is a million different impairment syndromes of the scapula. Uh, scapular downward rotation syndromes, scapular upward rotation syndromes, re relative flexibility and, and stiffness impairments. They talk about sternoclavicular joint pain, so sternum and the clavicle. Neck pain, with or without radiating pain into the arm. Pain in the levator scapula and the upper trapezius. Uh, what else we have? Well, obviously, you have a rotator cuff. Of all that, relative flexibility, stiffness. Oh, there's just so many. Oh, scapular winging syndrome. That was always a big one, scapular winging. And it is a big issue on the right side, and I'll get to why that is. But the interesting thing is, as you look through this book again, What they couldn't identify was that all these upper bodies that they're looking at, all these shoulders that they're looking at, all these asymmetries, they're looking at the right BC pattern. Everyone is like this. Left shoulder's higher, right side is lower. It's almost every single picture is the same. What does that mean? They are in the left AIC pattern in the pelvis, so their pelvis is oriented to the right, and then to stay straight, they have to twist to stay straight. And that's why you see the shoulder. So, but they did not recognize this as a stance phase of gait, as right stance. They're just looking at a body that looks tilted, not realizing what they were looking at. So did it work? Did most of these things work? Probably not. And one of the exercises that was very common back then was, was a Y exercise. They had a couple different ones. They had like the W, the Y, maybe the T. Basically, they were trying to strengthen the muscles of the scapula, the intrascapular muscles. So traps, rhomboids, so upper, middle, lower traps, rhomboids, probably serratus anterior also because that goes from the rib cage and then wraps underneath the scapula. So here's a scapula. It wraps underneath the scapula and it keeps the scapula tight on top of the rib cage. And they've always known, even research shows that people with shoulder pain and rotator cuff issues often have improper scapular muscle recruitment. That's great. The problem is this. Did they ever check the foundation upon which these scapulas sit? Negative. No one thought to think of, you know, I do see that these scapula, and this, you know what, this is not, this is a rough approximation. They should go a little bit lower, and you're never going to see it perfect. Uh, I tried to do it kind of symmetrical, and maybe it's not even. Actually, this is actually probably better. What you'll see more often is a right scapula further away 
to, from the spine and a less scapula a little bit closer to the spine. That's what you're kind of going to see. Uh, but again, it's not a scapular issue. It's because of the rib cage underneath. It's this right BC pattern. No one ever thought to check whether the foundation upon which the scapulas sit, which is the rib cage, the spine and the rib cage, were these ribs positioned properly for the scapulas to be positioned properly. It was always thought of, let's try to move the scapulas on top of the rib cage. But what we know now is you have to move the rib cage underneath the scapula first so that the scapulas now have a foundation to sit upon, a stable foundation. Because without that, you can do all the work in the world, but all you're going to do is strengthen already a dysfunctional pattern. And that's why it's very limited when you do not address the foundation of the rib cage first. And that's why you have those, all those exercises where you round your back and breathe. It is to bring the ribs down in front, particularly on the left, to reestablish that left ZOA. And now, the scapulas, when the rib cage is positioned properly, now the rib cage, the, the scapulas can move properly. So the futility of doing a Y exercise, and you, like to, and you see it in gyms, you see people doing them on TRX straps, they love that. But the problem is, if you're doing it, and you're arching, your, and you're already in an extended back position, this position of the, rib, of the scapula is faulty. So the muscles that you're using, eh, you might be using your traps, you might be using your subscap a little bit, you might be using your serratus, I don't even know at that point, because they're not in the right position to be util utilizing those muscles properly. So who knows what muscles you're using? And if you are already extended and you're doing it in extended position, I highly doubt that you're doing anything good. You're probably using a lot of upper trap, probably on both sides. Anyway, on the right side, this is what I'm going to concentrate on. Uh, you will quite often see a winged scapula. So a winged scapula means this. So here's the right scapula. This is the border the, of that's medial border closest to the spine. That pops up or away from the spine. So it moves away from the rib cage. That, now that's a very unstable right scapula. That's going to be an, a very unstable right shoulder. Now, you're also probably going to have very tight, no, no, I'm not going to say tight, probably overworked neck muscles like levator and upper trap that have to try to work to stabilize this unstable scapula. Now, in this position, the rib cage underneath is restricted. The ribs are in internal rotation because that's normal if you're on your right side. That's the position, the right frontal plane is closed down. So everything in the right side is restricted. These ribs are internally rotated, meaning there's no air underneath this right scapula. Without proper airflow inside the rib cage, the ribs are going to be compressed. You need to open them up. That's why we're always trying to get air into the right side. Now, not only that, this right, the reason this right scapula wings is because once you have to constantly rotate to the left to stay straight, the area in front, the right pec minor, subclavius, SCM, intercostals, probably missing a couple, but whatever, the right side in front is getting very tight. And because the, the scapula attaches, or actually, the, especially the, the pec minor and the, I think the bicep actually, both attached to the front part of the scapula where it comes over, it starts pulling it forward and in. Forward and in. So you often see right shoulders that look like they're coming forward. So it's down and coming forward. And at that point, because of the pull from the front, because it's constantly tight in front, it pulls, it makes the, the scapula wing. You can, you can massage those muscles to try to get things to change. You can try to pull this, this medial border of the scapula. You can try to work the trapezius muscles and the rhomboids uh, and the serratus to reestablish that proper position to bring it back to, to normal resting position. But it's not going to work unless you address the position of the rib cage first. And that requires, if it's, if it's, if it's a restricted, it requires air. So you've got to get back to the left side, orient your pelvis to the left, 
orient your spine to the left, internally rotate the ribs on the left side through exhalation. And if you establish that position in true left stance, remember, you're living in right stance. If you can get to true left stance on your next inhalation, you expand the right intercostals, the right rib cage. This fills with air. This scapula will re-engage, will sit back upon a normal foundation. And then you may need to do some exercises where you are using your right lower trap because the right lower trap will bring that back into a normal position. And the right tricep. So the right, I think it's the long head of the tricep, attaches to a scapula. So you need a right tricep also. Right tricep and right low trap will help reestablish the proper position and function of the scapula on the right side. And when you think about how that matches up with gait, because PRI is walking and breathing, we struggle. We're really good at standing on our right leg and rotating to the left and reaching with the right arm. Now, that right arm is disengaged because we already know it winged and it got pulled off its, its foundation because of the rib cage underneath is not in the right position. So in the right BC pattern, this thing has winged and is pulled forward. So even though, right, even though the right arm is forward, it's not engaged properly. The left arm is moving back. So the, here's a right stance. We're, we're on our right leg during walking, during gait. Right arm has come forward. We're really good at that, although not with an engaged scapula. We need to be able to stand on our left leg and bring the right arm back and the left arm forward. And that right there, that right arm moving back, will be the right low trap and the right tricep. That's not the only way you can get those two muscles, but that's what we have to be able to do and breathe in that position. So you're in left stance with right trunk rotation, right arm going back, left arm forward. At that point, I'm positioning my scapula, my right scapula, on top of that rib cage in the right stance, in, I'm sorry, in the left stance of phase, phase of gait, which I meant not the right stance, the correct stance phase of gait. So if just working on your low trap and right tricep while you're on your right leg or centered, because you think you're centered, but you're really not. Remember, you're really on your right side. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to reinforce the pattern because you're not neutral. You have to be on your left leg and then train those two muscles, which allow you to rotate your trunk to the right, which we don't do very well while standing on our left leg, and engaging that right low trap and right tricep at the same time with a head and neck that is neutral and not in a right TMCC pattern because you're still going to be a little bit stuck. And that's really what has to happen. Right scapula issues, right shoulder issues, are not usually shoulder issues. That's where the pain may be. But the issue is the rib cage. There's no air underneath it because you're on your right side and everything's restricted. You have to get to the left and open up the right side with air. And now this right scapula can return home to its foundation. And once it's home, you can then use your right low trap your right tricep to stabilize this and normalize walking and breathing mechanics. If you like this video, if it helped, like it, share it, comment. I love answering comments. Uh, I can't personally diagnose you. However, I can answer general questions. Uh, you could subscribe to the channel. Everything helps. And uh, have a great day. Thanks.